Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with this quilt block that I made as part of a tutorial. It's uh, way more than a block. <laughs> it ended up being quite a big piece. And if you watch that video, which I will link down below to and also on the end screen, I was like, what on earth was I thinking? I just wanted to show you guys like this Bargello way of quilting or piecing, I should say. And what did I do with this? Oh, it's the tube method, but no seam ripping. We cut. I don't know. I don't remember how I made this. Go watch the video. Since I had this big piece of fabric, I thought I should turn this into a tote bag. I think it will make a nice tote bag. So we are going to attempt that today. It's going to be, I hope, a simple tote bag. It won't be finished on the inside, so it won't be reversible. I want to skip that for now because I want to instead focus on showing you guys a quick and easy way to make like a boxed bottom. The straps will be added after the fact. I know there are a gazillion ways to construct this so that it's all beautiful inside and out. We're not going for beautiful. We're going for a tote bag that functions as a tote bag. That's all we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trim this. It looks like I have about, after it's trimmed, maybe 22 inches long by maybe 9 inches wide. So if this ends up coming out to a size you like, you need to know that. So 22 by 9. So, so I'm just going to trim this end here, take a little bit off. And the other end. Oh, I should mention, you certainly don't have to do all this to make this tote bag. You could just start with any piece of fabric you want. Denim would be good. Uh, we are going to add the fusing to this to stiffen it to see how that works. That's another reason I wanted to make this. So you just cut any piece of fabric. Actually, you're going to need... I got a phone call and I don't know where I left off, so I'm going to repeat some of what I just said. You can use any piece of fabric you want. It does not have to be something quilted, but it is a good opportunity to use some of your quilted stuff, especially like your crumb quilting things. You can make a nice little tote bag. We think. We don't know if this is going to be nice yet, so <laughs> we have to wait. All right, so, um, oh yes, and we are going to have a lining, so you could cut your two pieces at the same time, the same size, lay your two fabrics down, and cut. But I trimmed this, my goodness me, okay, I'm at 22 and a quarter this way, go with 22, and it looks like if I fold this over and want to trim, I should be able to get nine inches wide. So 22 by nine. We want it kind of looking longer than it would normally be. Like that would probably be a very deep little tote bag, but we're going to be boxing the bottom. So this might be good. Just trying to make a little tiny tote. Okay, I have to find some um, lining. Be right back. Looky, looky. I have some leftover muslin Perfect. This is from when I made the denim and muslin quilt. I will link down below to that too. So I'm just going to uh, put this here and I'm just going to trim all the way around. And it's actually going to be easier for me to just trim this on these sides. So that's what I'm going to do. Good enough. Now I want to stiffen this with fusing and I might put some on both sides just to really make it nice and stiff or maybe it only needs to be on one. I'm going to try putting fusing on here to see if it will still stick through all these seams. It should stick enough. Let's give it a shot. I guess I'm going to do it on both. Why not? I'd like it to be a little bag that actually like can just stand up on its own. Oh, the fusing. I have a link down below to that also. Got it at Walmart. I got a really good deal of like 10 bucks. It's a little bit more now, like 13, but 
it's still a good deal. And that's for the entire bolt. And it's a little bit stiffer than I expected. The kind that I get at Marden's is very, very thin. Like ultra featherweight, which is good for quilting. Okay, I'm just going to go and press this stuff down. I have the sticky side up, and I'll be right back. This piece turned out great. I'm not surprised with that because that's pretty basic. Now I'm going to go and press this onto this. And I do have a little bit sticking out. That's okay. I'll trim that after. That was a little bit tougher to make it stick. I actually put it on this side, which you can press on this side, but you need to put a cloth on top. And I was too lazy to do that, but I did touch it with the iron here and there, and that helped it. But you're probably going to be starting with just a regular piece of fabric and not something thick with all these seams. So now we are going to, what are we going to do? We, all right, I took a little time to think because I was getting screwed up. We want these wrong sides together. So you're putting um, fusible, touching fusible. We want our right sides facing out. Now you're going to fold with your outside. This is the good side. This is the lining. This we want to fold with this on the inside, like this. Wow, that is super thick. Now we're just going to go sew each side seam about a half an inch in maybe, I would say, just to make sure you catch everything. A walking foot would certainly come in handy for something this thick because it wanted to tug at the fabric a little bit and I actually have a couple little puckers right there but again this is not reversible so those tiny little puckers are not going to show. They're going to be in the inside of the tote. Now, I will take you to the machine to show you the next step. When you want a squared bottom, if you want it like two inches wide, then you need to cut out a one inch notch out of each corner. One inches starting at the seam line. So my seam is right here. So I'm going to cut out a one inch square. I'm going to just take my ruler here and put it on the one inch this way and this way and draw around it with my pen. So I'll show you this at the other camera before I cut it. See, you can see my little squares and I'm going to cut those out. I don't know, I'm almost thinking I would like a three inch bottom. That means I would have to do my little squares an inch and a half. And I think I'm going to just eyeball it and cut this about a half an inch bigger. Normally you would just cut on the line you drew, but I'm going to go out, oh, maybe like a quarter of an inch, a little bit bigger. I just want my base to be wider than two inches. For whatever reason, I don't know. Now I'll use this little square to cut my other side. Right to there and across. I've got this. No clue if that's even. But you end up with something that kind of looks like a diaper. I'm just going to fold these over. Hey, that's pretty even. Okay, now what you do is you're going to open this up, this little notch that we just made, and you're going to fold it flat this way. See what I just did? It was like this and we opened it up and this seam goes to kind of where the center of this fold is but all you need to do is just look at these corners and like kind of pinch each corner and just flatten it and you're just going to sew right across there I know there was no perfection performed on that task other side, same thing. I'm going to take those two corners and kind of flatten them out. And I'm going to put that down and sew across. You might want to use just one piece of fusing on one side because this is a little bit cumbersome. Ooh, uh-oh, 
Okay, see, I didn't catch everything. I can see that this is opened right here. See what I mean, Jelly Bean? So let me check the other side. Uh, a little bit open there. All right, I'm going to turn this back. And that means I'm going to look at the line that I sewed. I'm going to flatten this again. I'm going to come in another good quarter of an inch and go all the way across. My boxed bottom is going to be that much wider, but that's okay. I really was looking for a little tote that was really squared up on the bottom or a big wide rectangle. All right, so I'm going another quarter of an inch in. Okay, let's turn this again. I feel like I'm making this way harder than it is. Ooh. I do love a bag with a boxed bottom or a flat bottom. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Oh, it's gonna stand up all by itself, for sure, for sure. Okay, I ended up liking that. So you might want to make your little, um, let me see, how, how wide is that bottom? That is about three and a half inches. So definitely when you cut these little squares out, Make them an inch and a half. I think you'll like that. So you'll have at least a three inch bottom. Now what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just fold this over once and stitch around. Again, not the prettiest finish on the inside, but I just wanna go with functional right now and get this little project done and then we'll worry about different ways to pretty it up later. So I'm just going to opt for folding in and stitching around and then I'm just going to come up with two straps. I hope I can find some fabric that matches this stuff. I think I can. And I might just sew two little handles on because it's a, a little tote. So I'm just going to fold this in as best as I can. I could trim some of this stuff off but you know me. I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm just going to start sewing. I, you know I, how I hate pinning stuff, so I may regret this. You are free to fold this in all the way around and pin it. Now, I'm going to sew along the top first. So I'm just going in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to just keep it folded about the same amount. A little bit thick going over the bump, but it went okay. I mean, I'm dealing with so many seams because of the uh, Bargello quilting. Ooh, I'm almost done. Oops, and I broke my thread. I certainly, with this thickness, I would need uh, probably a bigger hold needle. Is that how to say that? A bigger hold? <laughs> think so. A needle with a bigger hole and or some better thread, but again, I'm good with it. So, I only have a little tiny bit to finish. Now let's make some straps or handles or whatever you want to call them. I do think this is quite cute. I'm not, you know, thrilled with the finishing, but again, we are just playing with this because I wanted to see how that double fusing would feel and to play with the boxed bottom. Now a good way to see how big you want your handle, I just put like the measuring tape and I go around and I say, hmm, does that look about right? I stick it in there and here. So I'm looking at like 12 inches. So that sounds like a good length for me. Now I gotta find some fabric. I found some scrap like this and that does appear in there so we're going to make the straps out of this and I'm going to cut two strips 12 by 3. I am going to add fusing to these and I have a couple little squares of fusing left over so I'm going to uh, use those. Let me just trim that like that and then another piece here. 
let me go press that down and see how that works. That worked good, so I'm doing the same to this one. And now I learned that if you have the glue side on the wrong side, <laughs> you can completely peel it off your ironing board cover and still use it. There was still enough glue. I had it the wrong way. Now I'm just going to fold these in half and press. So I folded each one in half lengthwise. I'm going to open it now and I'm going to fold each edge into the center like this and press. And then I fold the whole thing over again and we'll go stitch that after. So here's what I did. First I folded in half and pressed lengthwise. I opened it up and then I folded each flap in, not directly touching each other because it makes it easier to fold, but I pressed them in. You can see no perfection here. And I pressed that down and now I folded it again and I pressed it again. And, and now I'm just going to stitch up and down each side. I like to do each side because it just makes it look, I don't know, more finished. I did that one. I'm going to send this one through. Okay, I'm just doing the other side. I so suck at this job. I'm doing the other side, even though it doesn't need to be sewn. I just like the looks of it. And I'm going to send this guy through. I guess I'm going to try to just finish this up right here. Now I would just need to know where I want the straps. And I'm going to just put them inside. And like I said, it's not going to be finished there. But let me see. I'm going to just eyeball this and say I want one there. I'm going to pin that right there. So I just pinned it inside. I put the edge of the strap down to the edge of this mess. <laughs> and then I'm going to, you don't want to let it get all twisted, so I'm just going to bring it around like this. And I guess there looks pretty good. Okay, seriously, I have a lot of thickness there. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to match up on this side. So I'm going to just duplicate what I did. Yikes. Ow! Oh my god. I knew I'd frigging do that. My thumb. And I know you're not able to see that great. And I'm also going to just bring this around on this side. I hate making totes. <laughs> I'm on a mission to find the world's easiest tote. And I will. I will find that. I have another kind of tote that I have made that a lot of you have made. The crazy quilt tote. Oh, I, I made so many of those. I don't even know if I'd remember how at this point. Okay, so all I did is eyeball the straps. They probably could be moved over a little bit. I can see this is not as even as I'd like. I'm actually going to move this side over like a half an inch, both of them. But what I did is I just pinned them on the inside and then you use one side to match up where it belongs on the other side. And the they look about the same height so that's good so i'm just going to move these two over a tiny tiny little bit just a little bit and this guy also let's flip this over and i promise you if they're not perfectly even nobody is going to come around and look in your shopping cart and pull out a yardstick and measure the distance of your straps okay <sighs> Now I'm going to go around and I'm going to sew along the bottom and catch the bottom of this. But then I'm going to go around again and sew, I don't know, up here somewhere. Let's do along the bottom and we're going to catch the straps as we sew. And be careful of all those frigging pins that want to hurt you. I'm just going to keep the edge of my foot along the bottom of that mess. <laughs> And you could have made just one long strap if you wanted. 
and do it side to side. Totally up to you. Okay, I feel better that there are no more pins in this. And now I'm going to, I'm going to try sewing. See, I don't like that it's not attached to the top, but I don't want to sew right on that line again because I just don't want it to look sloppy. So I'm going to sew one more time, like right in between those two lines. How does that sound? Actually, if I were doing this again, my first line would have been kind of in the center and then I would have done this line to hold this and then this line up here to hold the strap. So I would do the center line first. But now I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to do it on, let's see, I'm going to turn this mofo inside out. When I sew on the inside of something, I like it turned inside out. I, it, it all depends on how you like to do it. But I like to hold this back. What's going on here with all this thread? Okay, I'm doing it on the top side so I can, you know, try to keep my line in between those two lines. We're going to be done after this. Shit. Thread again. My needle is probably very dull also. I know there are people who change their needle every single project. I change mine when it breaks. And it's probably been a year that I've had this one in here. <laughs> Get in there. There we go. Okay. And there are some people in the comments of other videos, they will slam the creator for not doing things the right way. And uh, I just think it's hilarious that people take this so frigging seriously. We're putting a piece of fabric under a needle. Who gives a shit what happens after that? All right, we are done. We are done. And I know there are many ways to do this. I know, I know you're going to be tempted to tell me all the ways that I should have done this. But I did it my way. And I think it came out great. Perfectly finished? No. But look, that doesn't look half bad in there. Who cares what it looks like in there? And if I would have used a, a darker fabric in here, none of this would even really show. And of course, I could have trimmed the... Yeah, um, the fusing better, but I'm happy with this. I don't know how long this took me in real time. Probably um, maybe an hour start to finish. <gasps> Isn't it cute? I just like it so much. I just do. And if somebody wanted to do it this way and make this neater, you could go get some ribbon, some pretty wide ribbon, and lay some ribbon down and stitch at the top of the ribbon, the bottom of the ribbon. It would just mean some more stitch lines here, but that's okay. So you could finish it off that way. Okay, so bottom line. Definitely do this your first time by just using two pieces of fabric. Don't try using some quilted piece of fabric with all kinds of seams. Two pieces of fabric is great. If you want to use something bulky like denim, that's awesome, corduroy, whatever. Take a flannel shirt, use the flannel of a shirt, but just regular cotton inside and out will be good too. I would go with one fusing, just fuse one of the pieces, you know, maybe the, the top side because I don't know that it necessarily needed two and it you know it did make it that much thicker I think that's about all I would change um, make the straps any size you want put them any place you want I really like it I'm trying to see how I can show it to you better I'll take some pictures of it and show you but I really like the dimensions it's deep enough yet it's boxy enough. Look at that. <sighs> Absolutely love it. I think this is a great project to do with our crumb quilts. Once you tackle, you know, making one and see if you like making it, then it would be a good project to use the crumb part as the outer and then just put the fusing on the lining. I think that would be very doable. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss any more of this kind of stuff, assuming you like this kind of stuff. I will be back with more soon. Bye!